Hey, what's going on, guys? David the Film Junk here. Welcome to the Film Junket Podcast. And I'm already yelling because I'm already all amped up and all that shit because that's what I do. Sorry, guys. And I'm currently, what am I drinking tonight, guys? I'm drinking Coors Light because I'm officially white trash. Uh, hey, <laughs> gotta watch the fundage, man. I just bought a car. You know, and starting to do all that, and I gotta, you know, I had to round up a lot of funds, and now it's like, okay, now I gotta watch my pennies for a little bit before I get back to uh, that 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 neutral zone. You know, when you when you make a big purchase, and then it's like for like a couple weeks or a few weeks after, you have to you have to just like, okay, well, what are you eating for breakfast? Uh, I got dust bunnies and crackers. Yeah, they're pretty filling, but I don't get full, but it's good enough. The stomach, uh, the growling goes away, but it's still, it's, I still don't feel nourished. You know, it's just shit like that. You just gotta, you just gotta, uh, you gotta work your way around. You gotta budget yourself and everything. So that's what I'm doing. So that's why I'm drinking Coors Light. But you know what? Fuck you. I find it, you know, I never used to like Coors Light, but I got so sick of Bud Light that I went to Coors Light and Keystone. I always like Keystone. And now I'm just like, oh, you know what? It's kind of refreshing. It's just like it's like carbonated water with like a little bit of a, a taste. Born in the Rockies. You know what I hate about Coors Light commercials? When they say it's brewed cold. Brewed cold. The fuck does that mean? Does that mean that it's going to stay cold? Like if I put it out. If I leave it out, is it going to stay cold? Is it like a glacier water like that that uh that water boy had that stays cold all the time? No, it's not. It's just going to stay the way it is. It's going to get warm. It's not going to stay cold. Just because you brew a cold, I mean, shit. What does that do? Does it do something at a molecular level? Is there something that a chemist came in and said, like, yeah, if you brew a cold, it's going to taste better? No, it's not. It's Coors Light. Fuck you. Anyways, guys, what's going on? Uh, God damn. It's been a, it's been a crazy week. It's been a, it's been a weird week. Well, not a weird week, but it's just been a, it just seems like a lot of shit happening on there. Um, we've got a lot of trailers. Since uh since the Justice League trailer that just like started the trend man and it's been great it's been fantabulous I and mean, we got the Mummy trailer tonight which I'm really looking forward to I mean can't go wrong now we got Tom Cruise running away from a mummy a very naked Sophia what's her name mummy who she uh she's hot anyways uh so it's been great and then of course there's all this <laughs> all the DCEU bullshit that I'll get into even more because I just posted that whole the whole video about the, the the heart, the whatchamacallit, the this, that, and then the heart, the humor, and the heroics. What is that? What if I... That, we, what? That's... No, don't even fucking say that. Oh. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry, man. No, I just saw something that said, what if we... <laughs> What if we already saw Bar? What if we already met Barbara in the DCEU? And it's showing that part where Bruce is waking up and he's got somebody lying next to him in bed. We're not doing that. No, 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 no. no. I gotta retweet this. No, 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 no. No, no. Okay, I, I shouldn't be tweeting while I'm fucking recording the podcast, but it's just like, Jesus Christ. There. Sorry. I just had to. <laughs> Ew. Ew, why would you do that? Yeah. Because, yeah, we don't, no, I mean, I've said that before. I think I've even said this on the podcast. Like, you just, you can't do that, okay? It's Bar Barbara is, uh, she's more like a daughter. She's a family member, okay? Bat family. And uh, that whole thing, it was so cringeworthy. It's, it's Commissioner Gordon's daughter, okay? You can't do that. Lay out, no. Oh, God. It just, it feels, it feels like incest. When I think about it, these fucking characters are imaginary, but it just feels like incest when I think about that shit. No, no, no. Anyways, sorry, guys. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it's an interesting week. Um, uh, I was, I've was i been doing training for the past two weeks at my work to do field work, which has been great, but it that just doesn't mean I'm in front of my computer seeing all this shit, which is a good thing because I just get, man, when it's, sometimes I'm just... 
I'm working and I'm at my desk and then I just like check my my Twitter feed and I feel like I'm just like uh, almost I'm getting half withdrawals and I'm shake I got the shakes and the sweats uh, you know and I don't need to be like that no I don't need to be glued to my timeline God damn it I'm watching Resident Evil Apocalypse for some reason it's so bad it's just so bad the Jill Valentine Dine whatever the fuck her name is character she's dressed like a hooker first off. She's a terrible actress, and I don't know. These movies, I don't know how they've... It's Paul W.S. Anderson, that's how. The guy fucking sucks, and he needs to stay away from properties. How did we get what? How many Resident Evil movies do we have? Like eight? Fucking 26? I don't know. It seems like they're never ending, but the last one was it. I didn't see it because I didn't want to see it. I heard it was terrible, just like the rest. It's like you ha- you have the storyboards right there in the games, and you can't just emulate it. You can't. You have to make these... Uh, overproduced and slightly under overproduced as in it, I don't know it tries to our b-roll shit maybe it's just underproduced I don't know it's just so terrible and if you have Mike Epps in a movie you know it's gonna be bad I'm just saying Mike Epps can't stand the guy you know he was actually supposed to play um um fuck uh, I can't think of his name uh, comedian guy damn it I know it's uh Richard Pryor god damn it I hate it when your brain just doesn't want to. It's just like it's there, and you're sitting there grabbing at it, like you're like you're at one of the fucking claw games, and you're trying to grab at that goddamn panda you want or something. The panda that has the San Francisco Giants logo on it. That's that's you got to be specific. You don't just want a panda. It's got your team on it. Um, you know, and it, it, your brain just wasn't pull. Anyways, yeah, he was supposed to play uh, Richard Pryor in like a biopic, and it kept getting pushed back and pushed back, and I think it finally got canceled. Why? Because he would be fucking terrible. He'd be absolutely terrible. I'm sorry. There's more to a biopic than just doing an impression. Mike Epps is not a good actor. He's kind of funny, but I've seen his stand-up, and I just don't like him. I, 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 don't, I don't laugh, really. You know, if you like him, that's fine. I know people that do. I'm just, I've never been a fan, and he, it would have just been a fucking terrible biopic because it would have just been him doing a stupid Richard Pryor impression, and that's it. When you look at some of the really good biopics out there the ones that got nominated it's not so much the actor doing an impression it's the actor transforming themselves and making it their own i mean look at look at uh you know walk the line okay joaquin phoenix he was he played johnny cash but did he full-on sound and look like johnny cash no but you believed it because he gave such a great performance now anyway so yeah my week was it was pretty yeah pretty grueling a little bit Learning all that shit, and I'm getting. I'm supposedly gonna do my own thing now. So I'm, and not to mention, I my phone was getting shitty internet because simply because uh, I had to change my plan, and I had only two gigs on the month before. So of course they bogged down the the uh, the internet. So I've been dealing with shitty internet out in the field, like 128 kilobyte kilobits down or something. And you know, it's been brutal, but now it finally starts fresh, and I changed my plan. Talked to T-Mobile, got something really good. Now I got unlimited, unlimited. So be prepared for um, more bullshit from me. Anyways, so what am I gonna talk about in this besides me just going? <laughs> Judging by my notifications, a lot of you seem to be happy about this theory. And then he has the gift from uh, Office. I'm dead inside. Yeah, see, yeah. see, nobody wants that. God, what were they thinking when they when they did the Killing Joke animated movie? My God, did they fuck that that first half an hour? Like, I get that they wanted to establish more Barbara, and that's fine. You can establish more Barbara, but have some balance and don't have her fuck Batman. That's just wrong, man. It it was so cringy, so cringy. And if you're, uh, I don't know. It, they just they just really fucked that one up, you know. And I remember like Tara Strong, who of course voices her, tried to back it up, and it was like, sorry, sorry, we love you. You're goddamn gorgeous. We love your voices that you do, but you, there's nothing you could say. I mean, you could flash your titties at us, and we'd still be like, yeah, but you got they fucked up. I'm sorry. Have you seen her? God damn, she is gorgeous. She is gorgeous. Oof. I had to unfollow her, though, because she got a little too, you know, sometimes, yeah, with these celebrities, and you get too political with stuff uh, on both sides, either if you're right or left, I just, like, go, you know what, you're too much, got to unfollow you, I mean, that's what, that's what I do with Joss Whedon, Joss Whedon, 
who is supposedly going to direct. Has he confirmed it yet? For fuck's sake, he hasn't, right? Let me let me check this out. Joss Whedon, because I don't follow him, because he's God. He's like was losing his mind. Uh, Disney man, a cast a hunchback. What? April Fools. Yep, 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 yep. Nope. He still has yet to confirm it. I don't like that because we're just going by people who have heard things. I don't know if it's all official. I don't know. But of course, you got a people that are just uh, so pissed off. It's mainly like the diehard DC fanboys are really pissed off because he was he was Marvel's captain for a bit there because he did the impossible. He brought the Avengers together, which people were blown away by that. How do you do that? How do you balance four big superheroes? Especially when you have one that's the biggest. So, I mean, that's what he did. He Essentially, Avengers and everything. <laughs> see, this is what's happening. And it, it, it worked with Avengers. And this is what... And there's another thing I wanted to talk about, actually. Um, Avengers was essentially an Iron Man movie. It was. It had. It focused on him mainly. He's the one that really saved the day. But it all made sense. It wasn't forced. But there was still equal balance between all the other characters. Okay, now, when it came to Age of Ultron, he tried new things. And he tried not to really centralize it too much around uh iron man around tony but he but it still was because tony created ultron but he was trying to do other things show some origin like he had that stupid fucking forced love story between black widow and hulk and i'm like yeah that was that was a big mistake get the that so cringy it's hard to watch just because of that Ugh. but you know and some people, um, you know, and I, I think somebody even asked me a question, too, when I get to the questions portion. Um, th there's nothing wrong. And I remember I saw somebody on my uh, timeline saying that, you know, it was awesome when Marvel didn't have all these crossovers that, you know, did this, that overshadowed and blah, blah, blah. You know, I have nothing wrong with crossovers. I have nothing wrong with heroes, cameo and other heroes. I love that. Because if you read the comic books, that happens all the goddamn time. You read a comic book, like every couple of issues, there's going to be like, oh yeah, there's Superman. He's in a Batman comic or vice versa. Or Green Lantern runs into somebody uh, out there. You know, you just, you see that happening in the books. So I'm perfectly okay, perfectly okay with uh, that happening. The only thing is, it's when that character overshadows the main character. And that's what Marvel seems, Marvel Studios seems to be doing with Iron Man. It's like he's overshadowing again, Captain America Civil War. And now it looks like he's overshadowing a Spider-Man Homecoming. It's like, I, I, we get it. That's, that's, Iron Man is definitely the Batman of the Marvel Studios universe. It's like, okay, we got to bank on him. We know that if we put, we put Iron Man in our movies, people are going to want to go see it more. But don't let him overshadow the fucking character who's, the and I hope they don't. Maybe I could be wrong. And even with Civil War, it wasn't so much that. But it very much, that just really felt like Avengers 2.5. Or it felt like, I don't know. I don't know. But you just can't do that. Like, what could have happened in Suicide Squad? We had, one, we had a couple little Batman cameos, but he didn't overshadow. He didn't overshadow the initial thing. You know, he just, he was in there just enough. Just enough. And I hope that, and he supposedly might be, it might just be Bruce, but he could be in Wonder Woman. I just wonder if it's like, because Wonder Woman takes place in the past, is she telling the story to Bruce? Very well could be. You know, why not? She's just telling him the story of how she came to be. That'd be cool, right? You never know. I'm, I'm thinking that's what, that would be awesome if that happened. I think that might happen. I don't know. It'd be interesting. But, uh, yeah, we've seen a lot of shit. There's more shit given to the DCEU this week with all this crap. I mean, the, the Justice League runtime, I still can't, I still can't get over how um, people... And websites really went with that. Uh, who doesn't want to see a Ben Affleck built like a rock? <laughs> no. Anyways, um, yeah. I, the Justice League Rudd time, I mean, when I first heard that, I was going, no, there's no way that they would possibly know that right now. You know, eight months out, the movie is probably about, I would say, 85% done. I'm sure it's about 85% done. Uh, they're probably fine-tuning the, the effects. But you know how many times that... Snyder and crew are going to be watching this movie over and over and over again and just might go, eh, this part right here, trim it down. Eh, right here, you know what? Let's go ahead and just remove this, you know? So it's going to fluctuate. I fucking hope it's around three hours. Give me four. I don't care. Give me more. And see, that's the problem. It's like, you know, Batman vs. Superman, the theatrical version was so 
you know, it got messy at, at a lot of points. But you watch that ultimate cut, and it's longer. It's a half an hour longer. It's three hours long. It feels shorter than the theatrical cut. It does. It feels fucking shorter. Because it just flows better. You get you just get a sense of the plot. You get more character development. You get you get so much in that movie. And you just gotta wonder how many critics would have came around if they actually watched that version. I just you just wonder. I don't know, man. But you know, with the whole CinemaCon thing, which they showed that extended trailer, they're not gonna release the extended trailer. It's okay because I think that footage that's in the extended trailer will most likely be in the next trailer. Even though it's, I don't really need any more. I don't, but I know at Com- come Comic Con they're gonna show us a, they're gonna blow us away with another trailer. That's fine, but after that, no more trailers. Warner Brothers, no more trailers after that. Just stop. Just don't do that. But they're doing a good job. They're doing a good job. They are. They learn from their mistakes with that that third or technically second trailer uh, for Batman vs Superman, showing Doomsday and how everybody was like, "What the fuck?" and then showing them all together. They, they realize, okay, people would rather have seen that on the big screen. It's true. It's absolutely true. That's why they had, they didn't show Ares. Am I saying his name right? They didn't show him in the Wonder Woman trailers. Not at all. And we know he's there. And he's probably going to be a big bitch, man. He's huge. According to that Lego set, he's going to be a huge son of a bitch. But we, didn't, we haven't seen him, which is great. They kept, they kept him hidden. And hopefully they do that with Superman, and I hope they kind of do that with uh, Steppenwolf. Don't show him. Don't show the reveal. Don't show, and they don't show like an epic shot of everybody together. See, they did that with Avengers though. In the Avengers trailer, they showed that that epic like uh, panning around shot of all the heroes together. They did. They did. See, that's the thing. A lot of people were going like, yeah, we were, we were kind of going like, okay, if people were complaining about showing the epic Trinity shot, why was nobody bitching a fit when it came to showing the epic Avengers Assemble shot? It's very true. Because there's a bias out there. Well, and not to mention that was something new. And we were just like, oh. Now we just don't want to see shit. Before, we always wanted to see shit. Now, there's been a turn. There's been a... Now, it's not all about the scoops and the spoilers anymore. It really isn't. People don't want to see and hear about this shit. They want to be surprised now. And I'm loving that it's... I mean, me too. I used to be that fucking asshole that would try to... That would find something. Oh, yeah, this could be a possible plot point. Spoilers. And here's a leak this. Here's a leak that. I don't like doing that anymore. I really don't like doing that anymore. I just like to give my opinions to talk shit. <laughs> That's what I do. This is the man. He, uh, he, uh, yeah, he, uh, he walked away from the Expendables. What the hell is going to happen with the Expendables? Why did he walk away, man? I don't know why. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. That's going to be, uh, you can't have the Expendables without Stallone. He's the leader of the goddamn group. You can't do that. It's my, it's my product! <sighs> Whatever. <laughs> I mean, three was enough, right? They fi- Didn't they finally make the, the third one rated R? Or they made it PG-13, watered down shit. Man, it's so stupid. My, we- God. Okay. <sighs> In the age of Deadpool and Logan, we know that R-rated, that people are craving R-rated content. I think Ghost in the Shell suffered, for sure. Be, you know, I, I honestly think if it was rated R, it probably would have made more money. I mean, I know it had all the stupid controversy shit, yes. And technically what they did was whitewash, even though in the same regard, they just they, she's a robot. And she looked exactly like the anime because the anime didn't have fucking Asian eyes. I'm sorry. Not trying to be, uh, you know, I'm not being politically correct here, guys. I'm sorry. But... She didn't have Asian eyes. She had round eyes. I remember, like, somebody I worked with, when they showed that first image, he went, yeah, it looks good. He was, he was a fan of the original. And he goes, well, she, the, the major in the uh, anime has round eyes. She, she doesn't look Asian, necessarily. But, you know, and like I, I even said in my review, there's a, there was a video that went around. There were a guy who was in Japan, I think, and he was going around showing people that first image. Asian, J- Japanese people who should be the most upset, and they were perfectly okay with it. He said most, he said nobody threw a fit. She, they said that she looked great and that they were looking forward to it. 
and they didn't think it was offensive or anything. It's 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 guilt. It's white guilty white. It's white people that get the most upset about this shit. It's so funny. You know, there's just I don't know. Uh, it, it, when it comes to changing the race and race and characters and, and existing characters, when it's when it feels forced, people are gonna fight back on it. That's just the way it is. Ghostbusters, when you force an all female cast and disregard the original franchise, guess what? Your fucking movie's gonna bomb and it's gonna get shit on. Okay, K. Paul Fag, it wasn't that we're all fucking misogynist and shit. It was that you you totally just shit on the original franchise and try to force this feminist message that you just can't do. You just can't do. Okay? When you force feed shit, people will reject it. Okay? When you change the race of somebody just to do it, it's not going to sit well sometimes with people. But when it does work, it really works. Look at Jason Momoa's Aquaman. We are totally, everybody's accepting that because it fucking works and makes sense. When it doesn't make sense, that's where you're going to have problems. You just can't force it. You know, you can't just put a black guy here because we need that. Even though, like, in this time period, there was no black people in this certain part of the world. You know, you just can't force that shit. It's got to be still a little bit correct. It's the same thing vice versa. I don't know. It's just my take. I mean, you know, I didn't mind that they changed Deadshot either. I just wish Will Smith would wear the goddamn mask a little more. I mean, we get it, Will Smith. We know it's you. But wear the fucking mask more, please. Deadshot wears the mask most of the time. In the movie, please. Wear it more in the next one, okay? But uh, Ghost in the Shell, yeah, it didn't do well. And I think it would have done better if they R-rated it. Could have just, I don't know. They, they, they missed an opportunity. I think, because it just felt watered down. Because I don't, I mean, I saw the anime a long time ago, but I know it was graphic, it was it was R-rated, and it just felt so watered down, you know? And I know, I mean, as much as there was a, some, hey, <laughs> Scarlett Johansson skin, you know, show the fucking nudity. Jesus, it's part of the goddamn thing. Don't be afraid, you know? Because it would be like that. You're creating a, a robot with skin on it. She's not going to be like, ah, cover up, you know? But it's like, but it could, you know, you could still have something over the vagine. Just have it just, just skin, nothing, like a Barbie doll, you know? You can have the nipples, but you can have no, uh, no, you know, little man in the boat. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, just have, just be like a, like a Barbie doll. Just nothing there. <laughs> but, uh, anyways, we had, we had two conventions this week and nothing came out of it, really. I mean... I mean, I guess when it came to everything, like, you know, when it came to Justice League the week and a half ago or so, a week, you know, week and a couple of days, that was just a party for us. You know, we got the posters, we got the concept art. I mean, we got, people were taking pictures of stuff too. That was, that was cool, but it was like no new footage, no, no, which is fine, which is fine. I kind of get tired of that too. And I was actually, I didn't want that beforehand last year. You know, when they start releasing clips, when the movie gets closer, they're like, oh, here's a clip from this. And I think with Suicide Squad, they released so many goddamn clips, and I was going, I'm not going to watch them. It's just not. There's like, you know, you start to get to the point where it's like, we're on clip number eight? What? Okay. So pretty much, if somebody edits, edits all this together, we got the half the movie going on here. What the hell? Ugh. Even though it's Spider-Man Homecoming, we don't need that. <laughs> ah. Ah, I'm still think ah, there, there's still gonna be surprises, hopefully. Um, so don't don't get too uh, worried about that. I hope. Um, but uh, yeah. yeah, a lot of people are like totally agreeing with the no, 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 no. <laughs> God, you just don't do that. You do not have Bruce Wayne violate Barbara Gordon. He would never do that. He would not. He would not. Not my Batman. But no, that's not anybody's Batman. It's just it's just not right. It feels like fucking incest. Oh, speaking of um, weird shit and, and speaking of whitewashing, which is not really whitewashing because this character was always white. Stupid idiots. God, the, the people that are most outraged don't even know the source material. They're fucking retarded. But you know what? If they did change Danny Rand to an Asian guy or a half Asian guy even, it could have worked. It could have worked. I'll give it that. It could have worked. It wouldn't have felt forced. It it wouldn't have. But they kept true to the source material, so I respect that. 
but it was apparently the most binge watched show of the year so far. I mean, we're only three months in the fucking year, but you know, it, it's just kind of funny how that is. Got shit on by critics, but everybody was like, oh yeah, I'm still want to watch it. See, that's, this is, this kind of shows you right there. And I don't know. No, nah, I guess you can't really say that because when it's Netflix, you're paying one monthly fee and you just watch something. Because I was going to say, like, with Rotten Tomatoes, and it's not going anywhere. And Brett, Re- Brett Retner, I did that. Brett Retner. Brett Retner? Brett Ratner. Jesus. That is terrible, Dave. What the fuck? Um, Telling you that Rotten Tomatoes is ruining the, the movie business. He's partially right because people will look at that number and that's it and determine whether they're going to see a movie or not. And obviously that didn't happen with Iron Fist, but that's simply because, hey, look at that. It's on a service that I could stream from my house that I pay $8 a month for. A month for it. So, But I was thinking, I was like, well, what if movies went that angle? But if, I mean, there's rumors that it might go to that angle, but you're going to play, you're going to pay twice the ticket price. If you watch it at home, you're going to pay like 30 bucks, but people will pay that because if you think about it, you could watch it with five people, 30 bucks, as opposed to paying 12 to 15 bucks for five people that, that rakes up that price. So I don't know what the hell they're going to do with that. I know there's directors that don't want it like Nolan and Tarantino and shit like that because they're old school. And I don't, you know what? I think with some movies, the video on demand thing really is good and everything. And Netflix is good because, you know, with small movies, you don't have to go out and have the theater experience for that. You really don't. But when it comes to these big epic movies, these blockbusters, that's when you want the theater experience. There's nothing like going to see a Star Wars movie or a DC movie or a Marvel movie on opening night. Because you have the diehard fans there. Everybody's wearing a fucking t-shirt. They're dressed up. Everybody's amped up. Everybody's clapping and cheering and just leaping out of their seats. It's like being at a goddamn concert. You're not, you're never gonna, you're not gonna get that at home. So people will still go to the movies for the blockbusters for sure. But when it comes to the smaller movies, yeah. Have the video on demand. Release it out. Charge people something and fucking do it. You know? I have no problems with that. But the big movies, yeah, you could wait. You could wait for that. Oh, jeez. I've been rambling on for how long now? They're almost half an hour. Uh, we just got to keep fighting the good fight, guys. You know, I try to be uh, partial. I still do... Marvel News, Marvel Studios. I'm still very much excited for the Marvel movies that are coming out this year. I love I, Spider-Man's always been one of my favorite comic book characters. Looking forward to the, his own movie. I like Tom Holland as Spider-Man. I'm, I'm looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. And, uh, I mean, those trailers have been great, and they haven't given away too much. Some people might say, like, oh, that fucking uh, Kurt Russell. Hey, he's a father. I'm like, yeah, you know what? James Gunn gave that away because he knew he was gonna get. He knew he was gonna these the scooper, the pooper scoopers. Which man, that guy's been quiet lately. Um, he knew that it was gonna get uncovered, and it's so he said it was something in the beginning of the movie that is not really big. And I'm just curious to see how they implement the whole planet ego thing. That's what's gonna be. That's what I'm anxious to see. Like, yeah, it was. It made sense. It's like okay, he's his father. Cool. I mean, but it's not like how Spider-Man's trailer was, where it was just showing like all the Iron Man stuff and Iron Man b- bailing him out of that goddamn ship ripping apart thing. That was that was stupid. They should not have shown that. Um, but I'm very much looking forward to that and Thor Ragnarok. Um, I'm really anxious to see that, even though I don't know. I, mean, I just it needs to have a darkness to it. It needs to be darker than Spider-Man and Guardians of the Galaxy. Okay, both of those movies, yes, they can have their comedic elements because that's what they are. But Thor does. Thor and the Hulk do not need to have too much of that. And it's almost seeming like, wow, is this gonna be like? You look at you look at some of the set designs and costumes. You're like, did Joel Schumacher direct this? Is there nipples on the suit? Yeah, you almost wonder. <laughs> I mean, good God. But hopefully, it's not going to be like that. But I'm, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I'm very much looking forward to it. But it's just very hard sometimes to uh, to not fight for the DCEU because I think it's just because, I mean, obviously, I grew up DC. I, I lean DC, obviously, always. But it's just, it baffles me how much shit it gets. And, and, and it's great that I see more and more people go, my, I'm, Man of Steel is a fucking masterpiece. You know, it, it took how many years? But a lot of people are just going, that's that, that's a masterpiece. 
I'm telling you, it, it's Snyder. It's the Snyder effect. All, all his movies, when they first come out, people kind of go, huh, what the fuck was that? And then five, six years later, they go, Jesus Christ, that was a masterpiece. Head of its time. And it really was. You look at Watchmen. Hell, I watched Sucker Punch last night. And the movie's not perfect, but it's, it's, it's an original idea, and it's very unique. And it's got so many layers to its story. Well, not too many layers, like three. And it's quite, it's quite original. And it's badass. And I've even seen people go, man, Sucker Punch is really good. But when it came out, it got shit on. I think if it came out now, people would be like, oh, my God. Because especially since, you know, people want more uh, female heroes. It's an entire female cast kicking ass. So, yeah. I don't know. It's like he's ahead of his time. He doesn't know what the hell. But and the same thing's going to happen with Batman vs. Superman. Ultimate cut. Again, we do not talk about the theatrical cut. It does not exist. The ultimate cut, three hours, is the only one that exists. Sorry, I didn't mean to go all Adam Sandler on you, but I just, no. No, no, no. I slap people's fucking hands. Do not even talk about that theatrical cut that was raped by Warner Brothers. Ultimate cut, so good. So good. Cult classic, man. Cult classic. Cult classic. But, uh, yeah, we just got to keep fighting it, you know. There's just always going to be that bias out there, which is weird. Um, I don't understand that. If you want to, if you're, these people are actually trying to be journalists, they can't be. You can have your op-eds and your opinion pieces, but you can't just flat out in um, a news headline throw some bullshit. Out. We're not going to be tortured by three hours of Justice League from Zack Snyder. Get the fuck out of my face, you dick cheese. No, that's bullshit. You just can't, you just don't do that. If you want to be taken seriously, you don't do that. You know, and it's, it's just what's plaguing the movie uh, blogger world. I don't like that, you know. If, if you're trying to be a journalist, you know, be a journalist. If you're going to be like me and just rant and rave into a goddamn microphone to people who want to hear, then rant and rave. That's fine. Do it there. But, you know, if you're working for a credible site, you must not be biased. All right, let's 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 get to the questions, okay? And if you want to ask me a question, do it, but just use the uh, Film Junket Podcast hashtag because it just makes it easier for me to find. Because I suck. Okay, so here we go. Uh, Mr. Everts. Everts. <laughs> ah, probably saying that wrong. Um, do you think Zach will come back to do Justice League sequel if the movie is fi- a financial success? Well, according to uh, sources, he, according to the whole thing, he is going to do it no matter what. He's going to do his next movie, which is The Last Photograph, I think it's called, which is a passion project. He's going to do that, and then he's going to do the Justice League sequel, apparently. That's what I was gathering. Who knows? If that's full official I, I don't know if it was fully official but i think um uh charles roven said that he was going to do that so i i'm pretty sure it's uh that and he knows what he's talking about okay peter con i cat daddy not sure if i've heard your take on this so i figured i would ask do you think steppenwolf will use superman turn him evil okay i've heard this theory i've heard the theory about superman being evil and, you know, it's been out there, and, and a lot of people have been, no, they can't do that. And it's, it's kind of, I kind of have mixed feelings about it, because I'd rather have Superman return like he does in the Death of Superman storyline. But it would be interesting if they did have, if they did make him evil. God damn, Resident Evil Apocalypse sucks. The fight scene right here is so bad. It's so choppy. It goes from, like, the choppy slow motion to... What the fuck? It's like jump cutting. Oh, my God. It's so bad. Anyways, um, Paul W.S. Anderson, you suck. Stay away from shit, please. You're ruining... You ruin franchises. Uh, God. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a possibility. and But I know... But it don't, it's risky because it might piss people off. If it's only for a brief moment, cool. But I don't want it to be like half the movie. <laughs> I don't know. That's that, that's a hard one because part I kind of like it and I kind of don't. I am torn. So I don't know. I guess we'll see. Um, or we'll 
Warner Brothers come back knocking. Ah, oh, yeah. Now, that's, yeah. anyways. Um, Iron Spidey suit in Infinity War. That would be badass. Why not? Upgrade that shit for a brief, not, not like the whole time, but just for like a moment. Give him that Iron Spidey suit. Why not? You know, we already know that Tony Stark makes his new suit that he takes away because we saw that in the trailer. Jeez. Eh, whatever. Um, Salvador, New York, asked, with all the hype about Wonder Woman, will it save the DCU? I'm sick of fucking hearing that. Ugh. Save the DCU. Save the DCU. God, we're going to start seeing that more than save the fucking planet or the whales. It doesn't need saving, first off, because it's very much okay. Um, yeah, critically, if you're talking about critically, I think so, yes. Critically, yeah, the DCEU needs saving. More more of the, the top critics, who cares about fucking blogger critics, um, need to uh, come around and not shit on it so much. It doesn't need saving financially because it's kicking ass. I mean, Suicide Squad was a huge success. Batman vs. Superman was a success. Maybe not huge because I think they were banking on a billion for that and it didn't quite make it. But Suicide Squad made a shit ton of money. Um, critically, yes. Because, I mean, I've said this before and I'll say it again. And I'm not afraid to say it. And some people have, have uh, commented and given me shit for this. But I think with Wonder Woman being the first female-led superhero flick, the critics are going to be a little more lenient on it. They're not going to shit on it as quickly as they would. And not to mention, not Zack Snyder! Critics don't like Zack Snyder too much. And it's not Zack Snyder. And it's also a female director. So they're going to be a little lenient. And if, you, if you're, if you're going to say I'm sexist about that, well, shit. I'm saying they're sexist because they're going to be lenient on it. <laughs> it's, it's true, though. I mean, it's true. Okay? They're going to be a little lenient, but I think I, I don't, but I, I don't think, I still think the movie is going to be badass. And I'm just saying that they're not going to be as harsh to it as they are with like Batman vs. Superman, Suicide Squad. You know, I think they're going to be like, okay, they're going to go in super positive and I think they're going to like what they, what they see. Honestly. Um, Sam, Samuel, Sam Heiss, Marshall Ali, Marshall Ali as Manhunter. Thoughts? Yeah. Uh, he could be a good one. I like it. I don't know if they'll actually introduce Manhunter. I had a weird dream a few nights ago. I think maybe it was last week. I don't know. Where I was watching a trailer. That was like, it was like, oh my God, they're going to premiere a new trailer for the DCEU. And it was funny because it wasn't happening on the internet. It was happening on TV. And I was having a... And I went to a party for it. It was fucking weird. And it was with people that, that I know in real life that would not give two shits about a trailer for a comic book movie, but I was there and the trailer looked like it was going to be about a Martian Manhunter movie. It was crazy, but it ended up being, oh, the Legion of Green Lanterns. <laughs> My subconscious don't know where that came from, but it was that, but it was like this big, huge creature that ended up really looking like the creature from the Black Lagoon. But I thought it was Martian Man. It was fucking weird. I don't I woke up scratching my head on that one, guys. Uh, Diego Diwali asked, do you think good Rotten Tomato scores for Wonder Woman and Justice League will make people stop the bias against DC? I'm a fan from Brazil. Well, hello from Brazil, man. That's awesome. Um, appreciate you uh, being a fan. Um, I Yeah, sadly, it shouldn't because it's just a goddamn number. Ugh. It's just a number, but it will. It will. Um... Because a lot of these people, I mean, Jesus, uh, the the trolls and Marvel fanboys had a field today with like those those uh, Rotten Tomatoes numbers. The only thing though, uh, the DC, the diehard DC fanboys are gonna be like, "Look at this, bitch! Certified fresh, yeah, in your face." And then if Wonder Woman does better than like Spider Man or Guardians, of, I don't think it's gonna do better than Guardians of the Galaxy or Thor Ragnarok, you know. They're going to start comparing, and it's going to be, oh, man, uh, we're going to have another fucking, we're going to have a couple more Civil Wars, guys. It's just not going to end. Uh, uh, Michael Minette asks, one other question. Why do so many people question everything the DCU does before it's shown in theaters? Because, I don't know, they hate Snyder. They hate the fact that Superman's not re rescuing kittens, and uh, I don't know appearing in front of Congress. 
uh, no, he did that in man. <laughs> what am I thinking? I was thinking of Superman four <laughs> when he was sitting up there. Um, no, I, I don't know. It's just the way it is. It's weird. I, I don't understand it. Um, I think it's because people love the Marvel studios format so much, or they have since 2008. They're so used to it that they wanted to see that. They wanted to see that in the DCEU. And Snyder was like, no, I'm going to do something different. And he did. And people just couldn't accept it. People, but they're coming around, though. That's the thing. People are coming around now. Like I said, it just seems like more and more people are going, Man of Steel was, fu- it was a fucking masterpiece. It was awesome. And, uh, you know, with Logan being so great, I think people are just coming around. And they're actually craving more dark characters. I just hope, I just hope well, with Justice League, they didn't brighten it up too much. Where now people are going to be like, oh, it's too fucking bright. Yeah, that would suck, man. Uh, okay, and he also asked, uh, top four worst Marvel films. Well, I don't know if you're talking about Marvel in general or Marvel Studios. I'm just going to say in general. Um, Elektra. Oh, Spider-Man 3. Oh. And Daredevil has its moments, but it could be up there. Marvel Studios. I would say the worst Marvel Studios movie. Mm. I'm trying to think. I mean, it's got to be Iron Man 2. That was such a letdown. Even though it has some cool moments in it. Um, Is there anything else? No, I mean, all those other ones are good. I mean, I like the first Captain America movie. The second one is one of my favorites. Civil War was great. Thor movies have been pretty good, decent. And the first one, too. I didn't really like the first Thor movie. There was a lot of cheese in that movie that um, I wasn't too much of a fan of. But I liked The Dark World. Um, Hulk, Incredible Hulk, the newest one was actually not bad. Or not the new, you know, the Edward Norton one. It wasn't bad. Um, I thought that was the fight between him and the, uh, Abomination was actually pretty damn good. Um, yeah, that's, that's, you know, those ones, that's pretty much it. Um, and let's see, uh, Jared Ward asked, do you think Warner Brothers has plans for the Joker and the Batverse that is happening? And would Leto even have the same commitment i hope so because they didn't let him breathe they did not let him david ayer fucked that up man and he knows he did he didn't let he didn't let leto breathe in uh suicide squad and he knows it and i think leto would come back and approach it again because he, he had a lot of fun doing it and i really and i do think he'll be in the bat first he's got to be it's just they got to show that they fucking got to show that so all right, that looks like that's all the questions. I appreciate you guys doing. Like I said, if you want to ask me a question, just ask me a question and then uh, hashtag Film Junket Podcast. Okay, guys. All right. Well, I'm gonna wrap this up now. Finish this beer and go to bed. It's a new week. Yay! Ugh. It's a new week, uh, but it's all good. Uh, so yeah, appreciate you guys listening. You guys are awesome. I'm still trying to. Work out what I'm gonna where I'm gonna use to actually stream this, so you can actually you know download and you know do whatever you want with this. Right now, I just have it on YouTube. I had it on a SoundCloud, but then I was like, I gotta pay extra to get more uploads and blah blah. blah. And right now, like I said, I'm just pinching the pennies. That's right, eating dust bunnies, eating death bunnies. Um, so yeah, I'll figure that out soon, and then I'll get them all on there. But anyways, appreciate you guys listening, and I'll talk to you guys later. See you guys later. See you guys later. See you guys later.